Yay! Yay! <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Chad, Ooh. I hope you'll be joining us soon. Oh, Danker's there. <laughs> All by of course, Danker is there. <laughs> Hello, 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 Jager, for joining us. Coming all over from uh, Mags's wonderful chat, I'm sure. Um, but yeah, so we're just chilling. How is everyone out there um, in Never Never Land? Because um, over here in the UK, it's crazy town with the weather, <laughs> which I'm probably. It sure gonna, is. Yeah. Yeah. I'm probably going to talk about it a lot because I'm just like, what? <laughs> what is happening? Yeah. It's uh, it's never Neverland out there, but here is Wizard of Oz. As we mentioned earlier. So, <laughs> exactly. so we are. Oh. So, Kylie's finally embraced her Britishness side. Finally talking about the weather, I see. Uh, how's that, Pete? <laughs> how's that for British? <laughs> you are now. Uh well, let's say hello to chat. I see one middle-aged gamer guy. It's come in. Evening. Evening. Uh, Evening, Mag. <laughs> Evening, Mags. Always lurking around these parts. I wonder why. Uh, Danker <laughs> says, doing good. Been bashing through Pal World for the past 48 hours. I have been... I'm sure we'll talk about this on stream. I don't want to touch too much into games. Um, but I've been watching Let's Plays of that. It's not something that I would personally play. I love watching when they're killing the little Pokemons, but they're like so happy and they're shooting the Pokemons and they're dying. So... <laughs> shush, shush. You can't say Pokemons. That'll be a DMCA strike. Pals, whatever. Kind <laughs> <laughs> uh, like when Temtem released, it was like, this is Pokemon, but not Pokemon. <laughs> Does anyone remember Temtem? Because that died no. out pretty quickly. Wait, is that the little critters? The Well, I mean, I guess mm -hmm. it is. But. They made like little stuffed animals of them. They were little hamsters or something. Tam Tams. The answer no, is yes, Pete. So. I'm pretending to be dumb. The answer is yes. <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay, all right. Fair <laughs> Look, I was playing dumb, clearly. Or I was being dumb. Ah, <laughs> oh, but we're going to have a lot of fun. Oh, Digimon. Digital monsters. Digital monster champions. So I used to watch Digimon. Uh, <laughs> really? I wouldn't have guessed that he knew the theme tune and everything. Oh, wow. Yeah, that was about as far as I went. Uh, <laughs> All I know about Digimon, and there's a, there was one called Suckamon, I think. That was your favorite one. Okay, wasn't it, Pete? wow. Pete, was that I your used favorite? To eat poop. <laughs> <laughs> oh, things were different when we were children. Oh, my yes. goodness. Yes. <laughs> So, Danker says, Pokemon uh, company don't want it to be known as Pokemon. Well, I know, but they can't stop me. I don't got any money, so they can sue me. They won't get nothing. But, um... <laughs> Apart from everything you earn from this point onwards. Okay. <laughs> I mean, you've uh, seen what happened with Nintendo and um, mm. the the guy who was doing ROMs. Yeah. Yeah. Every single part of his that. paycheck is now gone for the next part, rest of his life. 30% of it, in yeah. fact. Oh, yes. I hated that. Terrible times. Terrible times. Nobody All you'd have to do is move to a different country, though, and that would just go away. That's true. Or That's wor true. work remotely in a different country. Mm, yeah. yeah. Uh, Dan Game Tank, hello! Good to see you around these here parts. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> hello, Dan Tank. Uh, there's an earworm I didn't need back. Thanks, Kylie. Yeah, well, I see... I would wave, but I'm just an icon today. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That is fine. Uh, he's waving in your mind. Uh, <laughs> uh, between Muppet Baby's theme song and the Digimon theme song and Fraggle Rock, they kind of alternate in my brain all day. So there you go. <laughs> yeah, Fraggle Rock is now in my brain. Thank you for that. <laughs> <laughs> God, I love that show. Uh, let's see. Uh, oh, Mags would like to know, hey, Dan, why are you only an icon? Uh, that's because I, um, the, where I usually do my video is currently occupied by someone who's playing World of Warcraft extremely loudly. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, that's understandable. Um, so, yeah. Um, yeah. Well, Poor planning. Oh, no, no. Oh, is Nana back? Nana! Oh my gosh! Like, two months? 
You've been gone two months? That's our mod. Uh, <laughs> we haven't had, well, we haven't really had a show in two months, so we haven't had a mod either. Um, <laughs> Nana, how are you? Uh, tell us all about it. Um, he has digivolved into Icon Mod. <laughs> <laughs> Where do you find these people, eh? <laughs> they follow um, me home. I don't know. <laughs> I was going to say, but most of them followed us from Max's stream. Uh, but that, that makes sense then. Um... <laughs> uh, oh, goodness. Oh, one Mr. Dave Johnson has snuck in wearing a Kylie is actually small <laughs> I've never been called small in my life, but thank you. <laughs> And then, uh, oh gosh, uh, okay, chat's popping up. Pete, you were supposed to be in charge of chat tonight. Uh, well, when we're recording, that's oh, a different matter. So it's still my my responsibility. Great. I, you know I can't read. I never learned to read. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's overrated. Um, uh, yeah. Says the person who runs a magazine. <laughs> <laughs> Good point. Excellent promotion for debug there, but we'll get into that. Isn't it? <laughs> oh yeah, it's got pictures. <laughs> See, yeah. that's why I read it for the pictures. I like to read pictures. <laughs> I read them pictures real well. I'm they tell pictures. a thousand words. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> See, ah, uh, why do you pay your writers? You don't need to. No, I'm kidding. That is a joke. No. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> I'm a writer, so that is a joke. <laughs> <laughs> um yes uh let's see uh <laughs> like dan game tank what is read exactly uh max says coming soon debug podcast edition <laughs> we just read it out loud no there's an idea yeah, <laughs> yeah. um oh manic's yeah. here hi manic hi hi yeah I'm, I'm waiting for the audiobook version of the magazine <laughs> I like yeah it. who would read that like if we could get a celebrity to read debug who would we get Oh, Roy like, Baker, he's in everything. Oh, there you go. Mm. There you go. There you go. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Maybe Nolan North. <laughs> yeah. He's also in everything, too. Let them alternate is, between yeah. the two. <laughs> oh, well, that's a good option. Yeah. Stephen Fry. Oh. Um, Stephen Fry. Mm. <laughs> That'd be an interesting one, wouldn't it? Uh, a couple for Charles Dance. Uh, uh, Keanu Charles. Reeves is in it. One. Patrick Stewart. Keith Richard. Not Richard. Keith David. <laughs> I meant Keith David, but Keith Richard. I'd pay to hear that. Well, men I'm noticing as well. There must be some feet. I'd get Gillian Anderson. Gillian Anderson. There you go. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I'd love her to read it. Yeah. Now we're getting saucy. Um, but I that. I think most people would. Um. Yes, let me catch up. Oh, Patrick Stewart, yes. Reading Debug by an Open Fire sounds dreamy. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, yeah, get, <laughs> Keith Richards, Keith and Mick read Debug. It would just be a lot of slurring and huh. <laughs> <laughs> ah, okay, oh, well, I'm going to pour my wine and start my night. <laughs> I don't know about the rest See, of you. Well, well, Andrew's already started, so you've got a lot of I'm, I'm halfway here. through. <laughs> yeah. then, I'm halfway through my wine. Oh, very nice, very nice. I'll be joining you shortly. Uh, I'll be catching up quite quick. Uh, Dave says, <laughs> I get mad to read it just so I can mute him vindictively. Uh, I believe that. Um, Danzig says, Zippy from Rainbow reads Debug. Let's go. I don't know who that is. <laughs> You That's need to go one. to YouTube and search search Rainbow. Okay. Um, Zippy. Um, what? Who is the other one? The, what was the big bear called? Bungle. Oh. Bungle. Yeah. And Jeffrey, who is the guy? There's just one guy among a bunch of like weird animal things. <laughs> right. Uh, Zip, Zippy isn't really an animal. I don't know what animal would Zippy even be. Basically, Zippy was like a big yellow thing with a zip for a mouth. Oh my! This is oh. this is peak UK children's TV. <laughs> oh my! Oh my. It was it was a weird time back then. It Magic Roundabout like was basically an acid trip, so you know uh -huh. that just sets the tone. <laughs> that sounds yeah. amazing. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, Danzig says, "Will Andrew be soaking his keyboard in wine this evening?" <laughs> uh, no, hopefully not. <laughs> I was say, Already done. And it wasn't my keyboard. It was my actual computer, which I then thought I'd broken not long afterwards and had to take oh, it to the no. Apple Store. Turns oh out goodness. it's fine. 
It's fine. <laughs> Don't worry. Oh, well, lucky that. But yeah, oh I, my I'm, gosh. I'm keeping it close and I'm making sure that it's nowhere near the computer. So we're all good. Oh, phew. Uh, if but... you short out, it just so happens we know what's happened. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Uh, well, Max says, best £10 you've ever, you will ever spend. Don't forget Rod, Jane, and Freddy. And there's more. Rod, Jane, and Freddy. Oh, my God. Oh, no. Yeah. It's more UK stuff. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's a, so if you, if you YouTube it, I'm pretty sure there's, like, um, they did, like, outtakes, and they were all really rude. It was a kid oh, show, I right? Like but that. there's, like, yeah. all of the, all of the animals are swearing and saying sexual stuff, and it's all on YouTube. <laughs> it's hilarious. So it's worth a watch. Yeah, that sounds like Kylie's kind, kind of uh, yeah. kind of video. Uh, it does. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you're implying or insinuating. Pete. <laughs> no insinuation needed. You know exactly what. <laughs> uh, yeah, D Dacre says someone had a kink on the team, um, and then Dave says Kylie will be billed for the Apple Store this time. <laughs> 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 I've got a permanent. Uh, appointment slot at the Apple store, that's for sure. Um, <laughs> and then Max says... There I ask, why? Uh, because I keep dropping my iPads in my bathtub, hot tub. <laughs> you asked! <laughs> um, but Max says, just the one where they play with <laughs> their balls and clinkers sets it off. What the hell? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Dave says, of course you do. Yes, of course I do. I already started drinking it. Uh, yes, the TV production companies used to make stuff to be shown at the Christmas party that was definitely not for transmission. See, they did that with Thundercats as well. If you go listen to their stuff, their outtakes, they are amazing. I love it. Mm. I love all that stuff. Um, and then Dave says, I'd expect nothing less from Kylie. <laughs> Jenny! Hello! <laughs> Jenny, hello! I'm hey, just about to start drinking and actually start the show. Yeah, we're, we're 12 probably... minutes in and I have not started the show. <laughs> so, That's fine. Let's do that. Um, okay. So. Snarf, snarf from Danzig in chat. Ha! <laughs> snarf. Um, I used to have a little snarf figurine. I love to. Think about it. I expected well. that to go down a different path. I don't know why. This is Kylie we're talking about, I guess. What? <laughs> exactly. Oh, Nana, right. Nana asked, what's the subject of today's show? Well, Give if it a you... few minutes and you'll find out. Well, okay, there, that's the snarky answer. <laughs> but if you look <laughs> just behind no, Andrew's shoulder, actually a little to whatever side of that, that side, um, there's a magazine. <laughs> that, that right there. Yeah, we're going to be talking that, <laughs> and we're going to be talking some stuff associated with that, and I'm not going to have a Texas accent while we do this. Uh, so, <laughs> and she hasn't anybody? even started drinking yet. No, I haven't. That's only going to get worse. Ah, okay, here we go. Okay, we're on episode 185, correct, Pete? Yes, it was the same as when you asked me for uh, 13 minutes ago. I don't remember my own name five minutes ago. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, I'm going to start the recording now, and I'll count you in as per usual. So, starting in three, two. Welcome. <laughs> okay, so let's do that again. Count me in again, Pete. <laughs> three, two. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Rapid Reviews, episode 185. I am your co-host, Kylie Wilde, and I am joined by my ever-present co-host, Pete Beckett. Hello. And we have two, count them, two special guests today. One of them, a very much returning guest, Andrew. Hello. <laughs> and a new, very special guest, Dan. Hello. Good to be here. Yay! Everyone's glad to be here. Uh, so today we are going to be talking all things debug, which includes a magazine and also an award show but before we do that every time every week i like to ask our guests how they've done how they've been doing and like what games they've been playing <laughs> this week so dan i'll start with you since you're our fresh new guest on the scene how's your week been and what games have you been playing wow this is going to be a boring answer i'm afraid but yeah i i've been uh it's been a really busy week uh we've got awards preparation and the magazine and whatnot so wow what uh, what haven't i done this week 
<laughs> not play games, that's for sure. <laughs> that's probably a good answer. <laughs> <laughs> and then and then Andrew's gonna be like, Oh, I did, I don't know, sixty hours of wow. <laughs> I mean, it's not quite that. <laughs> All right, thirty-five. <laughs> um but yeah, uh first of all, I think that's completely understandable. And we will be getting into the ins and outs of that. Uh Andrew, mm. what about yourself? Which how you been? You've been playing anything? <sighs> Yeah, I've been good. Again, lots going on uh, that we'll get into later. Um, also preparing for tomorrow, I'm getting my first tattoo in almost 20 years. I've not had one since oh, I was 21 yeah. years old, so I'm getting a new one. So I'm like really excited and also nervous because like pain, but <laughs> it's going to be good. Um, so I'm very excited for that. But um, games wise, um, I've played a little bit of stuff for the magazine, uh, like American Arcadia, which is phenomenal. Um, but also, I picked up the new Prince of Persia, The Lost Crown, and I probably have sunk about 10 hours into that so far, um, oh which is probably not a good idea to tell your boss when you're <laughs> on deadline. Hey, uh... <laughs> I've been doing it in my own time, I swear. <laughs> and it's not even an indie game. Oh, goodness. I know. That's <laughs> right. Sorry. That's Ubisoft. Mm. <laughs> no, it's it's so good, though. It's so good. It... It's so good. I've, I've only watched... Okay, fine. I've only watched Max play it, <laughs> but it looks so good. First of all, the graphics look mm -hmm. amazing. Pete, I don't know yeah. if you've caught any footage of it, uh, just anywhere mm -hmm. out and about. It is a side-scrolling, like it's almost it's a platformer, isn't it's it? It's a Metroidvania. A Metroidvania. <laughs> and there Thanks. you go. Yeah. <laughs> and I am just like, what? Like it? Like I'm gonna play it. I know I am. It's it's. I've got the FOMO. Uh, yeah, but, um, Pete, what about you? How's your week been? And what have you been playing? Um, so my week's been pretty busy, uh, work-wise. Been doing a lot of hours at work, so haven't really had much time to sink into games, unfortunately, except for, um, Like a Dragon Gaiden. I'm still continuing my playthrough on that, and I'm up to chapter three with it. I'm surprisingly enjoying the game a lot more than I thought I was going to. Uh, the story's a bit, eh, but... It's bringing everything together if, um, with Kiryu's story, so it's actually quite a good introduction to those who haven't played the game, and it's it's definitely a good thing for those who have sunk a lot of hours into the Yakuza series, so trying to get ready for Infinite Wealth to come out uh, actually this week. Oh god, I better complete it soon. Excellent. So, but yeah, I'm, uh, I'm getting the FOMO about Prince of Persia as well. Mm -hmm. I'm really interested about playing it. It looks good. I was going to say, it looks like... I'll, I was watching it and thinking, Pete would love this, Pete would love this, Pete would love this, so... Oh, yeah, I'm old enough to remember the original Prince of Persia games, so... That came Ugh. up, too. That came up several yeah. times. <laughs> the, good, the good thing as well is if you... I mean, if you have an Xbox or a PC and you pay for Ubisoft Plus, um, it's like £15 for a month, and it's on there. It's like day one on there. So rather than paying like the 40 quid it costs to get it... If you want to play it and maybe try and plow through it in a month, then you can pay fifteen pounds and play it on your Xbox or on the PC. So yeah. Nice. Um, how have you been? Have you been playing it on Xbox or? Uh, yeah. So other? I got I, I got Ubisoft Plus for Xbox, but then I liked it so much I bought it on Switch. And the other good thing is this pro cross progression. So when my month of Ubisoft Plus Ooh. runs out, I can go onto the Switch and get my save file straight on there. So. Very nice. Uh, I've yeah. been wondering how the Switch version actually did run, so I'll, I'll come back to you on that one in the future time. Yeah, I've heard it runs really well. That's why I got it on Switch, because I was like, oh, portable, and it runs well. So, yeah, it's meant to be pretty good. Excellent. Excellent. Kylie, what about you? What's what's your been, week been like and what you've been playing? I was really busy last weekend, which is why we didn't have a show. That was the highlight of my week. Do you, do you want to know everything I got up to last weekend? <laughs> yeah, go on. You grab, you grab right on. But um, I was joking. Is, is any is any of this safe for work? <laughs> I was joking. Um, I yes. Know. No, I did. I I had a visitor. I played tour guide uh, to Max, middle aged gamer guy, UK. Uh, showed him all of Belfast and had a lot of good fun, like restaurants, and showed him the Titanic quarter and all that good stuff. And then. Uh, I didn't really do much. I did like a little tiny job, so I got to play games all week. But guess what I chose? And if you're in the Discord, you probably know what I played all freaking week. 
which is Power Wash Simulator. <laughs> yep, I've been seeing you on Discord playing that most of the week. Hours. I finished all the bonus maps, and I'm very excited about that. And then I moved on to uh, the uh, Tomb Raider one, and I'm starting that now. And I can't help it. I love Power Wash Simulator. I'm always going to love it. And that's welcome to my TED Talk. Uh, but... <laughs> Technically an indie game as well. So you're doing better Yeah, I than know. Me. Well, see, here's the very, very quick backstory. Uh, when it was in uh, early access, I begged our overlord, Mike, to please, please, please get me a code. They weren't even giving out codes yet. And I was like, please, please, please. So he got me a code. I did an early stream i think maybe five people had this game and then like a month later square enix bought them <laughs> it's like oh mm. there goes my article about this wonderful little indie game so <laughs> um but yeah. that's not the reason we're here tonight folks we're here for very serious and important discussion yep uh actually we're not we're here to talk about the magazine it is a serious discussion, but it'll be lighthearted. Yeah, there you go. Uh, yes, but this magazine goes by the name of Debug. And of course, there's a whole lot more that we're going to branch into. But I guess we'll start with Dan. Tell us a little bit about Debug, the history of Debug. And yes, you have the floor. <clears throat> history of Debug. Wow, that is a long one. Um, I'll try and shorten it for you. Uh, I've always been a big fan of magazines. I've always read them um particularly whenever we were going on a trip as kids it, it would always be oh you know pick up a bunch of magazines and read through them and just kind of see what um what's going on in the gaming world you know in the pre-internet days um but also the early internet days um and it, it was a couple of years ago now that i i, I noticed that a, a couple of kind of like independently put together magazines were starting to come onto the market. And I thought it would be really, really cool to do something that um, aligns with my passion, which has been for so long now, uh, the indie games market. Um, so yeah, last, when was, it, was it last year, Andrew? It was April, wasn't it, that we launched? April, yeah. Yeah. I wasn't there at the launch, but I do remember. <laughs> <laughs> I should remember. Um, yeah, it was April. Yeah, April the fourteenth um, that that we launched. Um, we launched at a games convention, which was called OLL twenty three. Um, Mag was there. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that that was uh, that was a that was a great weekend, and uh, yeah, it's it's just been just absolutely mind blowing how popular it's been since then. It seems to be growing day on day. Um, we're about to launch our fourth issue, I think, tomorrow, maybe? Okay, wow. Maybe okay. maybe Tuesday, is it? <laughs> pretty, we're doing pretty, like a pretty soon. Right now. Yeah, pretty no, soon. One, no wonder you've been pretty busy then. Yeah. <laughs> the touches on the magazine. Yeah. But yeah, the concept of the magazine really is just to show off, you know, not only the games, but really champion the people that are making them. Yes, absolutely. Yes. Um, so you have, I'm going to just sit, ask, you tell me yes, no. Uh, but so you have, I assume, like uh, dev stories in there. And, you know, is it, does it mainly focus on devs of indie games? Um, yeah, it's primarily about those, those, those that make them. So it's primarily devs, but um, we've, we've got some other stories in there, in, including regular, regular sort of columns and, and, right. um, articles written by like those that interact with games in a slightly different way for example content creators because yes. that's a different part of the story and a very important one for the indie the indie sphere because you know these games wouldn't go anywhere if they weren't talked about right that is so true <laughs> especially as indie games usually have limited budgets anyway uh so oh, yeah massively yeah, yeah. Um, so do you get a lot of um cooperation with indie you know, publishers and devs, or do you ever get any kind of like, oh, eh, we're going to pass on this type of thing, or is it pretty, everyone's excited? I, I think so far, we've, I don't think we've had anyone say no. Um, 
we don't always get you know f fully deep access with uh, you know all the details that a larger publication may get. But generally speaking, we have a pretty good relationship with most developers. Um, it's you know it's a mutually beneficial thing, isn't it? Exactly. Mm -hmm. That's where I was going. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, yeah, and one thing that stands out to me from uh, the issues that I've seen is, uh, well, uh, the covers. They say don't judge a book by their cover, but Debug's covers are great. Andrew has mm. the copy right now. <laughs> uh, yeah, I was going to say, I'm looking at the uh, website at the moment, and the copy for the third one that Andrew's holding up is absolutely yeah. fantastic for headbangers. Oh, it's it's fabulous. Yeah. yeah. Um, that's, that's my favorite one so far. But uh, four is looking four is to be... pretty cool, though. <laughs> Any, well, any, when, any... when four comes out, that'll be my favorite. Oh goodness! <laughs> yeah. Good. Drop any sneak peeks. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, issue four, the cover is on the website. So oh, we've okay. got the, uh, we've got Snufkin Melody of Moomin Valley is on the cover, oh. which is really incredible. So we have yeah. Moomins on the cover of issue four, which is brilliant. So very yeah. nice, very nice. Another British oh, thing, yeah. but I know what it is. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, yeah, it's Finnish. It's, oh, it's, it's okay. Finnish rather than British. There okay, you go. Yes, yeah. yes, there you go. There yeah, you go. I'm looking at the cover for that one as well. It's it's beautiful. Ah, that's great. Uh, yeah, so your art team, top notch, so good. Um, and also, I really love. I have a magazine background. In case anyone's like, why are you going on about this stuff? It's because I know it and I can appreciate it. And your layout is so good. <laughs> so, oh, thank you. Yeah, I actually very much enjoy that. Um, that's 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 yeah. got to be my favorite favorite thing that people say actually is that it it feels like a magazine. Yes. Yep. Mm. Yep. That is. Yeah. yeah. It it really comes across as you know professional. Not that it wouldn't, but you know what I mean. <laughs> it comes across yeah. as professional, yeah. quality, high quality, worth picking up, uh, worth sharing with their friends, and that kind of thing. Uh, but let's yeah. say so far, what's been your favorite, uh, you know, game? studio interview that's Ooh. happened so far i'm gonna ask both of you that so <laughs> mm. i mean for me i'll let you go first daniel <laughs> yeah so for, for me uh my favorite kind of experience with the magazine i guess you could say is um we had the opportunity to interview jason isaacs mm -hmm. um who for those that don't know he played lucius malfoy in the harry potter series oh right right okay mm -hmm. So it was pretty pretty scary that's, to be honest. Yeah, he's, that's big. He's definitely an A-lister, right? So, right. Um, but that was a really really cool experience. We we went down to BAFTA in London for the day to mm -hmm. sort of hang out and ask questions. Um, and the game the game that um, uh, that's the last worker the, the name of the game, um, <laughs> which is how how do I describe the last worker, Andrew? It's a sort of a narrative driven. Um, yeah, dystopian. Uh, like it's like looking at things like Amazon through like, well, they're telling the truth about things like Amazon and taking yeah. it to like end stage capitalism dystopian yeah. kind of area. <laughs> um, and it's VR. It's in VR, but it's, it can also be played flat, as uh, as VR people would say. So yeah, right. yeah, I've heard that term before. Flat screen gaming. Yeah. It's, it's a bit strange, <laughs> isn't it? It is, it is, yeah. It's strange, but yeah. it's the that's the terminology way. they use. Yeah. <laughs> I suppose they got differentiated some way, haven't they? Yeah, that's true. Yeah. But yeah, for for me, that was the one. You know, that's that's the kind of oh, we've made it now. Oh. <laughs> I would say so, yeah. hundred percent. I have to totally say yes and agree. Uh, Andrew, what about yeah. you? So I wasn't there for. Uh, for Isaacs, unfortunately. Um, that was before my time, as it were. Um, but I don't know, like, I, I've done some... There's there's a lot. Like, when we went to EGX, we met some really amazing developers there. Um, and I didn't interview them on the day, but I managed to interview them later for things for issue four. But probably the best so far, I think for me, it's like meeting, like, the, the newer or the smaller devs. Mm -hmm. Like, it's not necessarily the big, like, oh, you know, looking at, like... It was great to speak to the team at Snufkin, um, yeah. uh, Hyper Games. They're fantastic, really passionate about what they do. But um, I um, was approached by a developer who's actually local to me. They, they're in Brighton. 
and uh, they're creating a game called Corpo Nation and it's like a husband and wife team so it's just oh, the two yeah. of them and they're making this game mm. together and I got to sit in a cafe with them and interview them about the game and their Aww. influences and, and all that kind of stuff and it was really nice <laughs> like just with like a recorder and we all had a, a nice cozy cup of coffee just sort of sat around <laughs> chatting about the game um, and I think it's that that's the really important thing just getting those developer stories um, you know however big the developer is whether they're huge or just these small one or two people studios um, finding out what kind of makes them tick and uh, why they're making games and yeah getting their getting their um, their tips as well because we have a lot of a lot of other devs who read the magazine a lot of students a lot of first time devs and finding out like yeah. tips and tricks from other more established developers to pass on that's my that's my goal at the moment is to try and fit as many of those into the magazine so people can actually learn from people who are already making games right now so yeah well i love that if i wasn't already sold on the magazine that would have done it <laughs> <laughs> um so did you have any challenges when you were first setting up the magazine like any printing issues or anything as, as such <laughs> Any challenges? Wow. Um, <laughs> things went pretty smoothly, to be honest. Um, we're, we're a pretty, we're a pretty uh, well-oiled machine at this point, and well, from day one. And part of that was it was working with an experienced team mm -hmm. and you know, great writers and everything. Just just basically from the get-go. Um, uh, it's it's been difficult a few times with ma with making sure that everything's ready in time. Um. And then logistics to certain countries is harder than others. Oh, I yeah, um, yes. But yeah, we're 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 getting used to it, and I don't think we've had any you know big disasters. Well, that's touch wood. No, no. Yeah. yeah, but yeah, it's always good. Yeah, just lots of like late late nights trying to get everything ready yes. in time for deadline <laughs> and stuff like that. But you know that's that's just the well, magazine will for you anyway it I just was, happens that way i was gonna say that is typical that's actually good because that is typical <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I i've spoken to plenty of people in the magazine industry who have told me there have been so many late nights when they're just about ready to go to press so mm -hmm. I'm oh surprised yeah by that as well oh yes <laughs> oh, yeah. There's so many times when it's like, oh, we'll send you screenshots in time. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> oh, chasing yeah. up people. Oh, it's yeah. the best part the of it. The day before. Kind <laughs> of yeah. <thing>. yeah. <laughs> uh, and you told them a month ago to two months ago. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <It is. laughs> um yeah um so is there anything you can kind of reveal about the future any any spoilers you want to drop or anything now that is an andrew question for sure oh. Ooh. <laughs> um, i'll toss that over to you andrew <laughs> uh, andrew is the future oh i like that oh thanks daniel um <laughs> Um, I mean, yeah, I mean, I've, I've, I've come on fairly recently. Uh, issue four is my first issue with Debug. Um, we had Dean Mortlock, who has, um, he's been editor of uh, magazines like Sega Power back in the day. Yeah. So he was kind of like our initial uh, person who did everything. He helped set up the magazine. It's been great to kind of follow on in his footsteps and take over from him. Um, so I guess, yeah, in terms of stuff that we're doing, um, so I've been, I'm, I'm trying to think of what I can reveal and what I can't, but so issue four is like me putting my stamp onto oh. debug, I guess. So we have some columnists now. So we have like regular people who are going to be talking about um, making games from different perspectives. I think we mentioned it on the on the um, pre-order page anyway, Daniel, don't we? We do, um, we do yeah. Sure. We see exactly, so, we exactly who they are, yeah. Yes, so we've got um, the wonderful Tristavites who's talking about cozy games. We've got uh, Quang DX uh, of Asobi Tech who is talking all about uh, being a games developer. Um, we have Alex, and apologies, Alex, I do not want to pronounce your surname because it is very complicated, but it's Alex, the developer of Mythrect. Um, Polygon Treehouse, I believe, is the developer name. Yes. Lovely guy. Yes. Uh, he's got a very complicated Greek surname that I don't want to butcher on, on here. Um, but Alex is writing a column about the art of art. Um, and then we have the fantastic Philip Russell, who does the podcast Origin Story, and he's going to be talking about um, narrative in games. So that's one thing that we're bringing to Debug that we didn't have before, um, alongside a host of new things. Um, uh, just trying to think of things that I can talk about. Um, <laughs> we have one one thing. I, one thing I'll mention that I don't think we've talked about before is so we used to have. I'll find it. In fact. On the back cover, the back page, sorry, there was an oh article God. called uh, Last Minute Winner, 
um, which is is nice. But some people weren't sure what it was, and some people thought it was a mistake that we'd accidentally put something oh, on the cause... back page that wasn't meant to be there. Yeah, because it's like you know, it's showing the uh, what you know what's going on with how you create the magazine. Yeah. So we decided to change that, and we've changed it to something called um, something called Discourse, which is like our own little social media thing mm. where we get people from our Discord channel and from our, our Twitter feed, or X if you must call it that, um, oh. to give their opinions on certain things. Yeah, I know. Uh, <laughs> and then we, put, we actually print it, so we're getting a lot of... We're wanting to get people's, uh, our readers' opinions and voices into the magazine. Yes. I think it's really nice to get interaction from the people yeah. who read the magazine. A lot of people do that as like letters, pages and stuff. Um, but we're kind of leaning more into the social media yeah. side of it. And um, I think that's going to be a nice, fun last page for people to look at. So, mm. yeah, th there's a lot of new stuff. And then, I mean, beyond that, we are already talking. I I'm not going to say who they are, but the next two covers I've already agreed. <laughs> uh, and we're quarterly. Mm. So that takes us up until nearly October. Oh, wow. Um, wow. <laughs> so we've already got that planned and I'm already talking to people about the October cover. Um, but yeah, we're, we're, we're really like, we're all in this. We like, we want, we want this to be something that's going to continue for as long as we can possibly do it. So we're planning ahead. Uh, we're doing loads of cool stuff. Me and Daniel have chats nearly every week about cool stuff that we want to do both in the magazine and um, in support of the magazine yeah. and in support of developers because mm -hmm. developers <clears throat> are the main thing here like without the developers we wouldn't have these amazing games to play so we want to tell their stories we want to give them more opportunities um to to, to talk uh, about their games and also to talk to each other um that's why we're doing things like debug you in the awards as well yeah so just lots coming up i can't talk about a lot of it but um yeah issue four is going to be pretty exciting and we have one thing i'll say i did tease on one of our streams of the day i had a, an issue of um the old magazine dc uk in the background hey. So we may have something that involves that. And if you're a big Dreamcast fan, and if you know me, I'm a huge Dreamcast fan, then you, you will have something that you enjoy <laughs> in issue four. Let, let me just say, dear listeners and dear watchers, when Andrew said, this is the, uh, the not episode, this is the issue I'm going to put my personal stamp on, I was like, I was waiting for that Dreamcast column, that Dreamcast <laughs> special, that Dreamcast anything. <laughs> it always happens, it always happens. <laughs> This will be it. I'm not going to do it again. It's just the one and done. <laughs> to be you always manage to find a way to get Dreamcast involved in the conversation. Yeah. I have to. I have to yeah. Oh, goodness. Um, well, it was the 25th anniversary, right? So yeah. if, if go. we were going to do it at any time, it had to be now. And there are still people creating games for Dreamcast. So, oh, you know. yeah. There are, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and Daniel should know because Daniel also runs Wave Game Studios who are like publishing some of those games. So, Amazing. yeah. There you yeah. go. Um, uh, yeah, <laughs> I have to just read this one comment, Pete. This is one because it's funny. Go for it. Dave yeah. says, "Can I provide the October cover? I can draw an awesome Stickman Sonic." <laughs> there you go. That can be the subscriber like, cover. Sega might have something. Yes, yeah, Sega might have something to say about that. Maybe. Maybe so, still, uh, uh, actually, that does bring me on to a, qu a quick question then, because you brought it up. Do you have subscriber covers, or is that something you are going to be considering in the future? uh i know it's something we've talked about but it is the i guess it's the nature of being an indie publication is that it's the cost of it yeah. like you know edge and retro gamer and stuff they do subscriber covers but you know they're selling probably many thousands of copies um mm -hmm. we get to that stage where we're selling many thousands of copies which we're, we're getting up there um then i would say never say never but at the moment i think it's a little bit outside of our ability to do however we are doing a special edition cover for four which Ooh. we'll probably talk about more later because it's to do with the awards. So, okay. Yeah. Well, I have one mm. one last little question, then we are going to get to the meat of this story, uh, which is the awards, <laughs> if you haven't figured it out yet. Uh, but, um, so how could one person, one person, average Joe on the street, uh, get a hold of your magazine? Daniel? <laughs> well, that's a nice and simple question. They would yep. go to teamdebug.com. Ooh. Yes. Or come so and find us can... in person at one of the many events around the UK. Very true. We do sell them in person. You can buy individual issues and you can subscribe. Um, and just so people know, when you subscribe, you'll get the latest issue. So right now you'll get issue four as soon as it comes out. And then we don't take any more money until the next issue comes out. So about two weeks before the issue is due to be produced, 
we'll take the money from you. So we're not just taking up front or anything. We'll take it a couple of, couple of weeks before it's due. And then two to three weeks later, it should be on your doorstep. So, yeah. That's brilliant. Yeah. Simple as that. Yeah. And what's, yeah. Uh, for those who don't know, what is the cost of said issue? Uh, it is £7.50. Uh, yes. So yeah. Around, around $10 dollars US. And worth yeah. every when... penny or whatever it's called here. <laughs> yeah. You can you can get it digitally too. So if you don't want to have it shipped, because obviously there is shipping involved, or you just don't have very much money because cost of living, um, not everybody can afford you know ten fifteen pounds these days to have something like that shipped to them. We do have a digital copy as well and a digital subscription. So please do consider having a look at that as well. Physical is always best, uh, but we're not gonna you know we're not gonna begrudge anybody buying the digital if they want it. Just whatever way you can read it, just come and uh, give it a read. So yeah. Absolutely, I, I think physical is always best. But that's for my games and my magazines, okay. personally. We have two yeah. shows on that. I mean, <laughs> yes, it, it is great. But then I look behind me, and I have so many magazines that at some point I will have to like expand my house just to fit more in. <laughs> See that? Right, this keeps going well. You'll build another wing on the house. Oh, there you go. Yeah, there you go. Just for the magazines, <laughs> a magazine library. <laughs> nice. Oh, I would love, love that, honestly. Yeah, that would be amazing. Um, yeah, I've had to switch from physical copies of comic books. I've had to switch to digital. And it's sad because physical copies are so... its You want to feel them in your hands. And as Dan, Dan Game Tank said, smell them. <laughs> smell the ink and the paper um, and, and all that <laughs> That's stuff. That's the first thing he did when I gave him a copy for the first time. <laughs> he gave it a good, a good smell. It's what I do. But again... But I've worked in a print room for like ages, so that to me is just very like, oh, you know. <laughs> that's more of an old school thing yeah. as well, is you would go and sniff the uh, new copies of games, so why not do it with a magazine? <laughs> oh, <laughs> but... Or is that just me, or am I just weird? No, I yeah, I always smelled new games because I like the plastic smell. <laughs> but I am weird, Pete, so there you go. <laughs> but... Um... <laughs> Says, uh, Dan Game yeah. Tank gets high on magazines. He only uses the good quality publications, though. Hence why he uses <laughs> Debug. <laughs> there you go. Ah, uh, well said. Oh, yeah. yeah very well said. He can't deny it. Yep. Yeah. Um, is but it, is it only me? But you know that you were talking about smelling yeah. games. Does anybody else like the feel of the like the plastic of the cover yes. when they're brand new and it's like a nice, slick, almost silky kind of feel? That's exactly yeah. what yeah. I Over feel. time. I love it. It, it over, over time they kind of get yeah like, yes. it's weird but that's i, I love that about uh, like brand new games oh, oh anyway no, yeah. I do too. i'm being I weird too, too. Yeah, no, sorry, we'll be weird together <laughs> like, there's so many things i love about a physical copy of a game <laughs> yeah. but see i'm at the point where i'm like i so in the great debate i am always the odd one out i prefer digital i know i'm <laughs> i'm the odd one out i get it i know i've been told too many times but it has its I... advantages and its disadvantages. Mm -hmm. But the weird thing yeah, I mean, it exists for a reason, right? Right, exactly. Yep. Yeah. Uh, but the weird thing is, I still like the cases, and then it becomes de it's I'm defeating the purpose. So it's like, okay, yeah. maybe I do like physical <laughs> copies. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I've like, I, um, you can probably see in my background all these like binders behind me. Yep. Uh -huh. And these are all like my, my DVDs and Blu rays. Um, yes. So I used to at one point have shitloads of cases probably yes. elsewhere, but loads of cases no, yes. that, uh, that all around the house yes. and um my, my other half was like you can't have this many like dvd and blu-ray cases everywhere I, so i had to chuck away all the cases yes i don't do that for yeah. games i keep all my game cases but all of my dvds and blu-rays they're all in binders rather than the original cases yeah. that's so, exactly yeah. what i did and then i started ripping the dvds so i could get rid right. of them I still, I have now all, they're all ripped and they're on like the little terabyte hard drives, but I still have the binders. Because <laughs> I can't get rid of them. It's a backup, right? It's a backup just in case the, exactly. you know, the fail. It's like... <laughs> so, Look, it's preservation at uh, so, its finest. Yes, yes. Yeah, exactly. There you go. That's what I'm doing. I'm, I'm, I'm preserving my copy of Interview with the Vampire from 1997. <laughs> 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 Has it been released on 4K Blu-ray yet? Who knows? Who knows? Um, but it's on my <laughs> library. Uh, but uh, yeah, so 
we've covered the magazine. You're now familiar with this amazing magazine that you need to go out and get. And it's called Debug, just in case you forgot the, within the last three minutes. Debug. But, or the rest of the episode. Or the rest of it, or probably the title <laughs> of the episode. <laughs> but, um, but there's more to it. And again, we'll start with Dan. We'll move to Andrew because we want to know Debug Awards. What the frick is that? How did it happen? And also, what's all the other stuff that's happening with it? Because there's a bunch of stuff. Ta-da! Dan. <laughs> right. So, yeah. The um, the Debug Indie Game Awards are, um, quite simply, our celebration of the best, the, the greatest and best and most exciting and what have you uh, games from uh, 2023. Mm-hmm. And um, it kind of came about that we were that we were discussing that uh, you know we've talked about so much and it would be it would be great if we could sort of compile those the best of the best um and the idea was was kind of put out there by i think andrew um although it was very much a, a part of a seven hour conversation that we tend to have quite often <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like Gen- genuinely be- seven hours yeah yeah literally <laughs> And um, it was like, oh, wouldn't wouldn't that be a cool thing to do? You know, to do an awards ceremony or you know something. And to be honest, we were thinking digitally, like online, just like maybe on Twitch or something. Um, but then it very quickly evolved to, well, why couldn't we just do it in real life? Right. I love so that. we, <laughs> yeah, very, very, <laughs> very, 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 very quickly put together a plan. And <laughs> yeah. um, and if we've been working. Uh, 36 hour days since then <laughs> yeah <laughs> to make it happen but the the reason we decided to do it in person is because there was we already had an event that was coming up that at the time yeah. i don't think we were talking about very much so this is the i mean the reason that we're holding it in person at all is thanks to this event um which again i'll let you talk about it, daniel but that is debug you um which is kind of the event that comes before the awards so yeah yeah so the event's called debug you the you kind of stands for you as in you as a person you as in university it's kind of like a learning experience right okay um yeah it's the letter you (laughs) yeah the letter and and nothing to do with we you no not at all no definitely not no more like (laughs) itunes you than we you there you go oh i remember that that's it that's it (laughs) and part of the reason why it's called that also is that it takes place at um a building owned by Nottingham Trent University, mm. so it's it's a kind it's like our version of of a um, I don't know quite the exact terminology, but like um, an, an education focused event essentially. Like so it's all talk. about learning from each other, meeting each other, yeah. um, experiencing new games for the first time, and the way that that event. Is, is kind of planned to go is that we've got a bunch of games which hopefully most people won't have played before they'll have a great time playing those but then they'll they'll be able to speak in person to the developer of the games not just mm-hmm. a pr person or, or someone who's yeah. there voluntarily or whatever like some of the other shows the actual person or people that that made the game that's amazing i love that nice oh yeah mm-hmm. because i mean and then, Talking to the PR people that are at conventions and stuff like that, it's great. It gets you the information you need, but it's not the Absolutely. heart of it, you know, and that's mm. what, yeah, exactly. Well, it, it speaks yeah. to the ethos of everything we do, which is that we want to put the spotlight on, on those that have actually, uh, you know, put the hours in and, and the passion has come from them directly. Mm-hmm. Oh. And we want to tell their story. Ah. Yeah. And the developers are kind of all like arranged, like it's from the big developers who are making games that are funded by people like Sony, even though they're still indie games, all the way down to like solo devs and even students. Because we're working with Nottingham Trent University, there will be some of the students from Nottingham Trent University there too, showing off their games. Yeah. Um, So, yeah. Ah, And and then when you're bored of that... (laughs) We've we've got an auditorium with hours upon hours of... uh, that makes it sound bad, but yeah, plenty, <laughs> <laughs> plenty of of uh, talks and Q and A's and panels and whatnot to to learn even more. 
Right. I, I wouldn't say that's boring. That was always the best part of going to any convention yes. for me was learning and yeah. uh, listen to game devs actually talking about the craft. So I'm yeah. sure there are plenty of people out there who would really thrive in that. Oh yeah, and I'm definitely one of them. It's, it's to be honest, as as someone that's actually going to be there running the event, I'm going to probably miss out a little bit. Unfortunately, but that luckily, does happen. it's all being recorded. Oh, there you go. It is being recorded. Is yeah. it going to be streamed or? shown online later or youtubed or anything so yes yeah, so the debug you stuff won't be streamed just mm -hmm. because it's far too difficult to arrange it sure um but it's all being recorded and i mean recorded properly so that we it can all be edited together you know multiple audio streams etc so we can we can do a good uh we can put clips up and whatnot well yeah Max we says... do we do have a debug you site which is debug you oh, good. okay um, so when really? when everything comes together for that, that's probably the place that you will be going to to go and look at those uh, yeah. recordings. Excellent. Now, technically, technically for a few more days, tickets are actually available for that. So if you did want to go, and it, I don't know when the uh, you know the podcast goes up, but probably yeah. for the next uh, from now, week from now maybe. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Perfect tickets are available timing. and they're free it costs absolutely nothing that's that's actually yeah. perfect timing Even better this will go live tomorrow morning first thing perfect so Excellent. yeah like we couldn't have timed this better it's almost like <laughs> i timed it this way <laughs> <laughs> um yes yeah. like, uh, kylie yeah. was the one who said yeah let's get them on yeah because it's usually pete it's usually not me <laughs> Um, <laughs> but you might say I have a vested interest in it. But anyway, so maybe once uh, okay, so you've got the debug you, which is mm -hmm. amazing, and then you've got panels, correct? Am I correct? Yeah, which yeah, Max that's all part of debug you. Yeah, three hours long. Uh, <laughs> and then from that three hours panels Q and A type thing. Mm -hmm. then it's the award show correct is that correct yeah yeah so basically i mean timeline wise that all of the debug you stuff has happened Ugh. i've had too much wine all of the debug you stuff no such thing i've not spilled it I've, i can't spill any now because there's so little left. Um, i spilled mine already so <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, the uh, debug you starts at two two o'clock in the afternoon and finishes around half seven ish. Um, right, and okay. during, all the way during that time, you can play all the games in the uh, like in the main hall area um, and kind of um, chat to other devs. And it's kind of like a networking time. Uh, and all of the talks and the panels are happening at the same time, so you can choose to go in if you want to, or you can go off and play games and network. There's a bar because of course there's a bar. So you I'm can there. Go and, uh, drink oh. wine and network um, and play games My and all sorts of things. Three um, favorite things. Three favorite things. Yes. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Um, and then the the awards themselves. Uh, so they kind of they technically start at half eight, which is when we kind of do our pre-stream, um, as it were, and uh, we're hoping to show some trailers uh, oh, before nice. the stream goes live. Um, and then the actual awards themselves begin at nine p.m. Okay. Um, and those are live in the venue, so they'll be in the auditorium at the Metronome. Um, we're hoping to have a good 300 people around for the actual awards um, physically. And then we're also live streaming to our YouTube and Twitch channels. Um, and uh, so basically anybody around the world can watch. It is a truly global um, award ceremony. We have accepted uh, nominations from anywhere. So we have people who've been nominated uh, who are on a nominations list who are from all over the globe so it's not just people from the uk it's everybody uh so we want to make sure that everybody across the world can watch it and yeah it's hosted by trista bites uh which is going to be excellent love trista and there are actual real physical awards which are currently in production and will be given away uh to the winners so it's not just a certificate or it's not Maybe. not just as going congrats yeah. well done have this digital thing to say that you won <laughs> it's a real it's a real oh. thing that you can hold um and it's very exciting so those are being Maybe. made at the moment um yeah and it's just it's just really cool uh, there are 18 categories uh so we imagine it may go 
between an hour and a half to two hours, depending on uh, what we're not going to do is stop people from talking because that was a big <laughs> yes! thing at the Game Awards. Yeah, and you stole one of my questions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, um, oh, we kind of we off. saw what was going on. <laughs> we saw what was going on there, and we were like, the whole point of us doing this is to celebrate the devs. Why would yeah. we not let them talk? Um, obviously, we'll give them like you know, if you can keep it to a few minutes, then that would be great. Yeah. Don't go, Christopher Judge, on us. <laughs> um, that would be wonderful. Seven minutes or whatever. <laughs> well, you, well, Christopher Judge is now no longer on the list. I'm sorry. <laughs> He's disinvited. <laughs> uh, ah, yeah. um, So how? I know I'm stealing Pete's question right now because we talked about it previously. Uh, but how did uh, how did the um, the nominations come about and the categories come about for the awards? That was probably one of the parts of our seven hour long conversation in one of our 36 hour days um basically <laughs> we kind of well we looked at what was already out there and obviously there are certain categories that you want to always celebrate so you want to look at like you know best sound design best art direction oh, yeah. best narrative all that kind of stuff um it's kind of the the bread and butter of awards yeah. right? you kind of have to have those um and, but then we kind of looked beyond that and we were like okay well what else do we want to celebrate and we're like okay well uh, best new studio you know let's celebrate those up and coming new people who are you know, making their first game in 2023. Um, and what about best VR game? Cause best VR is kind of an up and coming thing. Um, I think the biggest ones and the thing, the ones that people are talking about the most are things like the safe in our world award for mental health right? and the everyone can award mm -hmm. for accessibility. And those are big ones for us because uh, like, you know, everybody has mental health let's put it that way yeah that that's one way to put it <laughs> <laughs> everybody has it everybody at some point in their lives will experience yes. bad mental health and will have things that they you know and yeah. games can be such a great way of like tackling that whether it's yeah. anxiety or depression or anything mm -hmm. but not only that they're also great ways to kind of um to explore those themes yeah. so games that maybe have a narrative that explore um you know uh different kinds of mental illness or mental health issues mm -hmm. um and of course you know myself and daniel you know thankfully don't have any disability that requires us to need accessibility for things right. but we know so many people who do require those things and it's mm -hmm. such an important thing now in gaming accessibility we went to egx and i think there was one setup in the entirety of egx that was set up for accessibility uh, which shout out to Pine Hearts, uh, which is a fantastic oh. game. They they had a proper full on setup, for, so anybody could come and play their game. Oh. Um, oh. And it should be something that's that's kind of looked at much more. So we wanted to create a category for that, just to celebrate the the developers who are actually putting in the work and making accessible, making their games accessible to as many people as possible. So yeah, oh, that's amazing. They all deserve awards. <laughs> <laughs> unfortunately we can't give it we can't give it the award. that kind of defeats the purpose of the award show <laughs> but i'll be like you're all winners in my book you get the kylie wilde award <laughs> which yeah. is just an invisible thing not an actual thing um, but, um so is there anything in particular that and this is for both of you uh Dan, we'll start with you. Anything in particular that you are just cannot wait for uh, the night of or the day of? Oh, um, that's a deep question, weirdly. Oh, um, I like that. I, I'm looking forward to meeting the ridiculous number of people that seem to be just really awesome folks. Mm hmm. Um, the, obviously, there's going to be a bunch that I've already met, but it, yeah. it seems like we're going to have probably easily 200 plus people that i've never met before and it's going to be a really interesting challenge to try and speak to them yeah mm. while trying You've to run the event at the same time <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that 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 will be fun i'll be there uh, <laughs> yeah. that, that to be honest is why i do all of this mm -hmm. um yeah it's, it's because of the great people that you get to meet yeah. I absolutely agree with that. Um, I, I alluded to it earlier, but networking, which is kind of, is probably the wrong phrase, although it is networking, but just yeah. meeting the people that is in the gaming community. 
you know, it's, mm-hmm. it's always yeah. fun. It's so much I mean, fun. look, it's, it's an awards thing. It's an ed- educational thing. It's an, it's, an, it's an expo. It's whatever you want to yeah. call it. But uh, fundamentally, it's a social. Right. Mm. Exactly. Yeah. That's a perfect descriptor. Um, but, Andrew, what about you? Uh, what is your highlight? <sighs> the bar. I mean, similar. Uh, <laughs> similar. I mean, I'll, I'll say something different. The bar, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just to build on what he said, it is, it is true. Like, meeting people is great. Like, yeah. I, I came into the industry very late. Like, I'm almost 40. I started when I was probably about 35, 34, 35. So oh, I started wow. really late in the industry. So getting to meet people it, it is, like, fantastic. And I had the best experience in December where I got invited to go to Bilbao uh, International Games um, Conference. And the experience I had there, I was terrified. I, I have terrible anxiety and oh. I was on my own. And I was oh. like, the first day I got there, I got there and I was like on the phone to my partner saying, I don't think I can do this. I think I'm going to have to leave and go back to my hotel. I can't do it. And it was at the, exactly that point where the guy who was running it came up to me. and was like, oh, hi. And he was like, I was like, I have to go. And I hung up and he was like, oh, I'm going to take you here. And we're going to do this. And we're going to do this. And he was like, exactly what I needed at that point in time. He basically just guided me through the whole thing. Um, and that's uh, Antonio Santo, who is the, one of the co-founders of the event. Fantastic man. He even at one point took me to a, um, a talk that was being done all in Spanish. I do not speak Spanish. And he sat next to me for the entire thing and he translated the entire <gasps> thing into English for me. Oh my and gosh. it's people like that who take the time to like, you know, oh. do that kind of thing for people which is really incredible. I met so many cool people, you know, people from the UK who were going there visiting people from Spain who I'd never get the opportunity to see otherwise. Um, So yeah, these kind of events uh, are amazing and being able to see people and meet people in real life and get to know that actually there are amazing people out there and you wouldn't know that necessarily from the internet because the internet kind of gets, (laughs) you get the horrible people having the bigger voices. But in real life, yeah, yeah, (laughs) in real life, you get to meet the the people who are really great. Uh, so that's kind of expanding on what Dan had to say. Um, and so I'm hoping we're going to be an event just like uh, the Bilbao um, conference because, yeah, that was just fantastic. But for me, yes, the bar will be great. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be there with you, Andrew. <laughs> Yay. Um, spilling wine everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> um, but I guess for me, like... Uh, for me, it's the it is the awards like actually being able to to kind of do this for the indie scene. Yeah. Um, you know, there are other festivals and awards that kind of celebrate indie, but there's nothing big out there. Like you go to you look at the game awards, you look at the golden joysticks, yes. and they have maybe one category that's for indies, yeah. and everything else is always swept by the bigger developers. And it's like, well, let's mm-hmm. just take the bigger developers out of the equation so that they can't sweep all of the categories, and let's just give this to um indie games and yeah being able to to see those games be celebrated and uh yeah that's going to be my highlight i mean we've worked with we've not announced them yet but we have a whole panel of people who are judging the awards uh or half of the awards at least um there's a whole thing that it would take me ages to explain (laughs) but the this panel is made up of 22 people um and they're from across the industry they've done all sorts of things we've got people who have been working in the industry for 30 years we've had you know we've got people in pr we've got people in journalism we've got people we've got devs all sorts of people and they are the people judging these games so um i don't even know the outcome yet because the final votes haven't been tallied they would we're leaving it right down to the wire i think they've been tallied mid next week so knowing what those winners, who those winners are, and then being able to celebrate with the winners on the night is going to be, yeah, that's going to be really special. Ah, oh, that sounds amazing. So what, what, uh, what was the process for getting your panel of adjudicators for the awards themselves? And how did you go Ooh. about actually contacting them to ask them about it? <laughs> it was, oh, <laughs> yes. like doing the, the laugh. It was, it was a tough one. Um, so we obviously we started with, so everyone can and safe in our world, they are uh, judging their own awards. So the ambassadors for safe in our world are going to be, they're playing the games as we speak and making their decisions. So they will decide on the, um, the, the award for mental health and everyone can, their, their team over in Manchester, they're playing the games that have been nominated for that award and they will decide on the award for accessibility. 
Um, we're deciding on some of the awards because, um, like, for instance, the Diva Game of the Year, because that's something that we want to decide because, right. you know, we run a magazine all about yeah. indie games. Like, you know, <laughs> we kind of know we know our stuff. Um, and also things like physical release of the year. Unfortunately, we can't get 22 copies of every physical release to send to the judging panel. So um, <laughs> we just, uh, damn it. Yeah, um, so we just have to do it ourselves. Um, but yeah, the the other people who are judging, um, we basically just, me and Daniel just made a list, really. And we were like, who would we like to have? And we didn't want to pick mm. all of like the obvious people. We wanted people who are in the industry, but maybe who, you know, they're, they're, they're maybe well known in social media circles, but they're not like Jeff Keighley kind of level of people. Right. You know, we want, uh, yeah. I mean, I can't name any of them. The reason I'm not naming any of them is because, and I know it wouldn't happen, but we don't want to have it where somebody might try and bribe one of the judges to vote no, for them. I get that. So we're going to wait that. until all the votes are in. <laughs> mm -hmm. No, I and think. We'll, then we'll... Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> so it's secret until then but the, quite a lot of them will be at the event um and they'll be able to let people know that they were a, a panelist uh once all the, all the votes are cast so you'll find out but there are a lot of really cool people people you will know people maybe you won't know um i was really really happy with, with one of the people we were able to get who has been in the industry for 30 odd years and has made or was part of making probably one of the biggest um games that there, there's been um in terms of uk development so yeah very exciting um mm. it was different it was a difficult process not everybody wanted to do it and everybody has the time to do it yeah. uh we, because we decided to do it quite uh, like i was gonna say on a whim it wasn't on a whim but we did it very quickly mm -hmm. like we the process of putting the awards together was super fast so when we got to actually getting the games together and giving them to panelists, we're like, you have like two weeks to play all these games and make a decision. And some people are like, I'm quite busy at the moment. <laughs> like, okay. um, but surprisingly, most people did actually say yes. And they were really pleased to, uh, to do it, really happy to do it. Um, yeah, it's very, it's very exciting. I can't wait for people to know who is judging because there's some fantastic, Ooh. they're all fantastic, but there's some, there's some big people in there. Yeah. That's so cool. So if you sorry, so if you plan to do this again next year, which I really hope that you do, so. will the mm. panelists be rotating each year, or we try and have a few, a uh, few that say the same, or move them? Or yeah, get some newer people in. I, as I well. mean, obviously we've we've had this these discussions. Um, mm. I don't know how much is set in concrete at the at the moment because I think we need to sort of see how it how it works in hindsight. Yeah, I think one of the things we did talk about was perhaps um, having previous winners be on the panel. So we don't know if that's a for sure thing yet, but nice. like, so for the instance, people from this year, the winners of this year could be on the panel for mm -hmm. next year. Obviously, as, as long as they don't clash with, you know, the, it, there's not like a conflict of interest or something. Um, but it would be nice for at least some of them. I mean, we have at least 25, well, between 20 and 25 panelists and we'll have 18 winners or, or there or thereabouts. So it won't all be winners, and I think we definitely don't want to have the same people judging each year. Um, but that's not to say that people who have previously judged maybe couldn't come back at another year. But like like Daniel says, it's something that we'll work out because this is the first time we're doing it. Um, we don't know we don't know how it's going to go just yet until the until the night, I guess, and how yeah. that how well it's going to go. Um, I think we've already said, haven't we, Daniel, that we definitely want to keep doing it. Um, definitely, it it's yeah. just going to be yeah. It will just depending on how people, how people, um, what people think of it, essentially, and how many people tune in and stuff will depend on how we'll do it next year. Whether or not it will be another in-person event, whether it will be digital. Hopefully, we'll do another in-person event. And if you want us to do another in-person event, please watch it live. Please yes. live stream it so that because um, that's you know that's a big thing for us. We want people as many people to watch as possible, and that kind of makes it all worth our while. I mean, mm -hmm. to be honest, just giving the developers the awards is worth the time. Yeah. But um, doing a massive show takes a lot of effort. Yes. <laughs> so as many people as can actually watch as possible. Oh, great. my gosh. Yes. But <laughs> so let's say it's a success because it's going to be it's 100 percent going to be a rousing success. But next year, are you going to pull a Jeff Keighley and have like a Tesco sponsored category for outstanding <laughs> <awards>? <laughs> No, no, we do. So we do have a sponsor, which I should mention okay, because, um, yes. because they're great. But, 
<laughs> so that is uh, Press Engine have sponsored uh, the oh, Indie yay. Game Award. Yes. They are amazing. That so is amazing. we we didn't want to work. Yeah, we didn't want to work with Tesco. Um, <laughs> like, not for us. Every little so, helps, Andrew. <laughs> it, it's, it's true. It's true. Really horse but, you know, <laughs> yeah, and they still have got rid of all the games in their stores as well. So really, what are they bringing at this point? There you go. Uh, okay. The games industry. Valid like, point. You know. <laughs> Next so, is sponsored by CEX. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Um, but, no, but you have to pronounce it the way they do, which is sex. Which is sex. Uh, That's sponsored which, by sex. It, it still I makes s- me feel weird saying that, though. I know. I didn't know that till I saw an actual advert of them, and it is pronounced sex. Anyway, that's I not here nor there. Yes, Andrew. <laughs> So, so our sponsor, our sponsor this year is is uh, Press Engine. Um, they amazing. are incredible. Yes. Like the, the people who who run it are the nicest people, and they do amazing things for the indie game industry. The fact that they, you know, they help um, put the put keys in the hands of reviewers um, to be yes, able to review these games. They market. Um, they're just a really great um, resource and platform. So if you are a dev or you're a journalist or your PR. You go to pressengine.net. Uh, they are fantastic. Yes. Uh, sorry for a little plug there. No, they are absolutely. a sponsor, so we I do have them, to so, yeah. give them a plug. Um, they will be there on the night as well. Uh, so if you're there, do say hi to uh, to Gareth and Phil. Phil Collins. Oh, that's great. Who myself and... Yeah, not the Phil Collins. No, no, uh, I, I know both of those guys. <laughs> I know both of them, yes. We've, we've had Gareth yeah. on the Gareth's show. Gareth's been like, on the show. Oh, lovely. He's amazing. Gareth is lovely. He's great. He's wonderful. Yeah, yeah. Phil, Phil's yeah. great. But and me, and, me and yeah. Daniel got an email. Me and Daniel got an email from Phil Collins, and we were like, "What? <laughs> <laughs> Why is Phil Collins emailing us?" And I quickly realised it's not the Phil Collins. It's fine. You felt the calling in the air tonight. Oh wait, wrong person. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Oh goodness. Um, yes, Mag's distracting me with uh, how he would love to be a sex worker. Oh, but... <laughs> <laughs> oh but, Max. <laughs> Such a card. Uh, but, uh, yeah. Um, so, it, do you want to? Uh, this is our time to shine, people, before we move on to our questions from the audience. Now, bef- before I finish this up, uh, chat, if you want, uh, as previously mentioned, hashtag questions. We're going to go through it. Give us your questions, and we will ask these wonderful, wonderful people. I, I have a quick question because oh, I'm not okay. sure if it has been stated. What is the actual date of the awards? Oh, I'll let Daniel take that one. Go on, that Daniel. Really that's that's a fantastic for... question. It's, yeah. uh, the yeah. se- it's February the 2nd. Yes. Excellent. 2024. Very soon. Very yeah. soon. Mm. Very soon. And are tickets still available if people want to go? They are, yes. They are available. Yeah. And but not for long. They... And yeah. how would they go it's about a... doing so? Um, they would go to, I guess you could go to debugu.org because a ticket for debugu is a ticket for the awards and vice versa. Um, you get to go to both. But I think there's also, is there still a form on debugawards.com as well, Daniel? There is, there is, yeah. Yes. So either or, um, if you applied on either of those, you, you'll you basically be put forward for a ticket for both it's, events. So. It's pretty much sold out at this point. It's just um, as, 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 as... Yeah, it's... Um, uh, yeah, it's uh, it's it, <laughs> yeah. it's pretty much sold out, but there are a few left. Yeah. Okay. Mm. We'll see. That's good okay. to know. And, and it's and at the point s- where we have to be careful. Ooh, my lights just flickered. And you also oh. said that obviously it's being live streamed. So where would they f- be able to find the live stream? Where what platforms are you streaming specifically on? So that's Twitch and YouTube, and the username for both of those is Debug Org. So that's Debug O R G. Uh, if you send that over in the chat, I'll make sure that is in the description of this episode for everyone who wants yeah. to, who is currently listening, watching live awesome. or listening in the future. Awesome, thank you. Um, Pete, do you?